Actually, that's an interesting one. In the, in the in realms of customer service, this is another one that's bugged me. I mean, I've done it. I've worked in customer service jobs for a long time, and um, it's a really interesting, really interesting industry. It's a really interesting industry um, to me because it's being in customer service for so long. I guess restaurants and bars primarily, but I, I've done I've done kind of uh, direct marketing roles and uh, gen generally just kind of general public facing jobs I've done a lot of that so naturally my my thought processes have automatically um, how can I put it automatically geared towards towards uh, social aspects of life I don't I don't think in terms of science I guess or anything I just think in terms of the way that people behave and the way that I've been I've seen people behave that's how I, I think um, and customer service is incredibly interesting um, for that because you genuinely you see people in their most unadulterated uncensored way whether it be good or bad I mean you, you, in my time in restaurants I've seen I've seen like you know the couples who've been together for, for like 50 years and stayed married and are still in love and still happy I've seen I've seen love in its most glorious form I've seen love in its least glorious and most horrible form like I've, I've served tables before where they've seen happy and great and they've got bottles of champagne at the table and I'm not even joking I left the restaurant that very night and unfortunately I saw the guy like strangling the woman holding her head over the bridge near the restaurant um, I had to go and get security to break it up but I think the guy saw me um, and uh, and they kind of stopped but yeah I saw that I saw I saw the guy punch her in the face and throttle her like I think it was about 20, 25 minutes after I'd been serving them, and they were fucking happy as hell at the table. So I don't know what happened. Um, so I got, I witnessed that. I witnessed like the abusive father at the table. I think, I think I saw a, a tad of overdominance. I've seen scenarios, and it's really depressing, man. I've seen scenarios where like you can just, you kind of just get this horrible feeling that the the woman at the table, they'll be in front of the kids and everything. The woman at the table is so scared to make a fucking decision that she just decides not to say anything. I remember one one example where everyone at the table, the kids and the mum, was so subdued and the father was the only person who said anything and everything he said just uh, had, a, had a, an air of absolute authority about it. It was really uncomfortable. Now, I'm, I'm speculating here. I'm not suggesting that this was genuine. Like, yes, he was abusing the entire family. But it's hard to ignore when you when you see it. And I remember at one point I actually directly addressed the kid and he looked to his father to, to speak back to me and uh, the dad just looked at me and answered for him. And then at one point towards the end of the meal, I can't remember what she said, but the mum actually spoke to me directly and I believe it was something along the lines of like, thank you or something. She just she was just saying like, you know, thank you for taking care of us, whatever. And the look she gave her husband, like, holy shit, I opened my mouth, I'm really sorry. And I didn't know whether to speak back to her or whether to fucking, you know, whether to talk to the husband or what. I was like, oh my god, like, what? I don't know what to do here. Because um, it, it kind of, ugh, I, I, I don't want to over-dramatise in my head, but it just seemed at the time that I, I think from her speaking, it was going to come back at her in a bad way at the time. Um, but no, this is, this is the, the, it's not, it's not magnificent in a way, but I find it, incredible uh, the voyeuristic nature of working customer service so closely with with the general public because you just see things like this like you might hear about it in the news and you might hear about it in papers but when you when you serve the general public you see it and i don't think they intend for you to see it but it's incredibly oh God, it's <laughs> even though they might feel it's quite private people see like everything it's hey. so transparent at the same time like when you're out having a meal with with whoever um, and certainly as a, as a waiter, you're supposed to read your guests, you're supposed to like profile them and, and see what kind of person they are so that you serve them the way they want to be served. And so you end up, you end up probably seeing more than you think you should be seeing. You know, you might be seeing that glowing insecurity, you might be seeing that um, like drug addict, you might be seeing, uh, I, don't know, I don't know, like sex fetishes and sex. You might, you might, honestly, you might see these things in people, it's really bizarre. Um, you might, you might, you might see that hidden homoeroticism in them. You, you just don't know. 
Uh, and it's, it's, it's really bizarre, it's really, it's really crazy. Um, but that, that's how I ended up thinking a lot about um, the social constructs in the world and, and not so much about science and, and other, other massive, like, I don't know, psychology and perhaps things like that. Um, and what I always never, uh, what I, well, no, what I always try to think about in customer service is honestly why it's, it sucks so much as a job. Um, and people say, oh, it's because you get treated like crap and people are rude. But actually, in, in honesty, the majority of customers that I've ever served haven't actually been rude. The, the, the problem with uh, that statement is that really, realistically, we just pay more attention to the people who are rude. We're more susceptible to the rude people. Like, we could have one rude person in a day, and that one rude person will effectively ruin our entire day. So it all becomes about that one person. Hey. Um, or, or two people or whatever. So we don't talk about the lovely couple who we served who were really friendly and really nice, really pleasant, they were patient and they were, you know, they were understanding or whatever. They, they were just nice people to serve. They were chatty and they had nice faces and stuff like that. We don't talk about them. And I, was, I served plenty of those people. In fact, a few of them became my regulars because they were just, they were just not easy to serve, but just lovely to serve. They didn't make me feel like I was at work. They made me feel like, you know, I was actually in my own home taking care of them and they just simply allowed me to do that which is the essence of of hospitality and restaurant work is that you just want to make people feel like they've come into your own home and you're taking care of them in your own home and, and that that's it that's that's kind of the 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 essence of, of hospitality that's what you want them to feel um so so really i don't believe it's about the poor customers it's just the fact that you just they just frustrate you they kind of they kind of get in the way of you wanting to do a good job and that's annoying because effectively in hospitality again all you want to do is a good job you just want to take care of people that that's oh wow cool that's effectively yeah that's what you want to do and so so we focus on that but I, I, I thought about it some more and I continued to, I kind of obsessed about it because I was like really what is it is it the fact that we get paid minimum wage no not really because honestly in, in hospitality certain restaurants I I don't want to I'll say this carefully like I've not really ever suffered from getting paid minimum wage in, in the UK. In the UK, just go. Will you just go in the bloody bin? In the UK, I haven't really suffered from getting paid minimum wage. I've, I've, I've managed my life around the amount that I get paid. So I don't try to live beyond my means, and that's that's extremely important for me that I do that um, because, well, if I try to live beyond my means, I'd end up more than poor and I would feel that it was because I was getting paid minimum wage not because I was trying to live beyond my means but still like you know I, I, I obviously I get tips as well so I'm not really on minimum wage but then I have hobbies you know I'm able to do this I like to snowboard I bought my own snowboard I'm trying to start wakeboarding at the moment I want to try surfing I want to do all these things that cost money and I'm still able to afford them if I'm not and they're just out of my reach I save up for them it's simple as that so it's certainly not the minimum wage thing and honestly I, I've also said that if you work in restaurants and you're getting paid minimum wage and that is honestly your paycheck either you're in the wrong restaurant and I suggest you leave immediately or you are a really really shit waiter and I will say that uh, wholeheartedly you are a terrible waiter or waitress um, oh no oh you son of a bitch what the hell oh that's bullshit have I can I have more please thank you um, Ultimately, I think the reason people hate customer service, and it's, a, it's actually, honestly, the same reason that people hate any job, is it's, it's repetition. It's the same thing over and over again. Um, and that's no word of a lie. Like, you think that because you're serving, let's say, 50, 100, 200, maybe 500 people a day, you think that you come across different people. But you do and you don't. Like, it's, it's still, in essence, the very same job. It's the... It's almost the very same people um, who do the very same things, who maybe ask the very same questions. And after after some time, perhaps it wears down slower, perhaps because they're people, you know, and it's you're socialising, you're speaking to people, so it feels different. You're seeing different faces, you're hearing different voices, but in essence, it's the same thing, and you can go through the job exactly the same way. You can hear the same jokes over and over again. You know, you, someone walks into an empty restaurant that's about to be full because of bookings in like half an hour, and you tell them that they can't be sat down because the restaurant will be full in half an hour, and they're like, oh, it doesn't look like you're going to be that busy. And you hear that a lot, and you're like, yeah, I've heard that before, but trust me, we're going to be busy. Um, 
But it, I, I genuinely think it is, it is honestly the same thing as any other reason why people would hate their job. It's just the repetition. It's the same, the same thing, the same jokes, the same questions, the same complaints in some regards. You know, my food's cold or this wasn't done the way I liked it or whatever. It's the same, it's, it's the same thing. Um, and it just, it just wears you down eventually. Along with that, you know, you've got the unsociable hours and, uh, and you are on your feet for 12, 15 hours a day. Uh, I'm not. I'm not saying like it's the worst job. I'm just kind of explaining why it is not. Um, why it, why it is honestly hated so much. Uh, I guess I'm talking more primarily about customer service, but maybe in the customer service realm, because you are dealing with the same people day in day out, whether you're on your feet or not. It's just repetition. It's just a form. It's a form of Chinese torture. It's repetition constantly, over and over and over again, until eventually you go insane. And that I think that is the crux of it. Um, it's. It's not because people are mean. People are mean. People are mean wherever you go. You don't have to be at work in customer service to know that people are mean. People are mean all the time. All the fucking time. Like, you have to deal with assholes when you go out drinking on a Friday night. You have to deal with assholes when you're trying to get home at 5.30 in the evening. You have to deal with assholes when you're on the internet, for Christ's sake. Assholes are everywhere. So it's not because of that. I genuinely... It is because it's the repetition. And that, that's what I honestly believe. And people who think it's because they get treated poorly in, in their job, have another job. And don't don't believe for one second you won't still be treated like shit in another role. Like, people get treated like shit in other jobs. It may happen less, but you still get treated like shit, believe me. So don't think that just because you work in customer service or hospitality, um, it's the, exclusively the only place you get treated badly. Because, believe me, it's not at all. Uh, I've done a couple of other jobs and, yeah. In fact, funny enough... If the, I, and I, I don't know if this is going to mean anything to anyone, but I actually got treated uh, much better as a bin man in Canada. I, I worked as a bin man uh, in Canada for, I think, a week or so. I know it was just a week, but generally, in the course of that week, uh, I worked for quite hard. They're very hard workers, and I have a lot of respect for them. Um, and they were treated like they were treated like gold. We got given like drinks. Um, people were up at six o'clock in the morning giving us drinks and snacks. I love Canadians so much. They're just the most beautiful people. Um, you know, they were out there thanking us for cleaning up their rubbish. And I was like, hang on a minute. So I spent ages complaining about people in, in hospitality, working in restaurants, which is pretty much what I'd done. And yet here I am being a bin man and people are, people are lovely to me. Like, what the hell's is that? Um, and, and it just, I kind of made me realize that I, I'm probably just a little bit pathetic, really. I'm just a bit just a bit, bit pathetic and I, don't, I haven't really gained any perspective on what it's, um, what it's like to do other jobs and how people can really be. So yeah, yeah that, that's, my, that's my theory of customer service, certainly. I, lo I love thinking about it anyway because, because honestly, I, I think that there's a lot to gain in customer service. There's actually a lot to get out of it. Um, there's a lot you can learn, there's a lot you can see. And some people, honestly, that I've come across are fantastic. Some people have taught me so much. Um, like, like I did learn with, in customer service that you know, people can still be in love after 50 years of being together. That, that's, that's what customer service taught me. Customer service taught me that, excuse me, no matter how confident you are in a relationship, it can still unfortunately fall apart. Um, customer service taught me that just because you have a lot of money doesn't mean you're a good person. I know, I know that you can learn this elsewhere, but this is what customer service has taught me. Just being around all these people and working with, with, uh, with the general public in the way that I have, this is what the general public has taught me, and this is how I've learned these lessons. Um, but I've learned them right in front of me. You know, they've been happening and taking place in front of my face. So I've learned them in the not through reading, not through seeing it in a video, not through second-hand information, but through first-hand understanding when I've seen it right there in front of my face. That kind of thing. Um, so I still, I still, I do honestly find customer service to be a remarkable field, and I, I mean, I, I just. I want to say, as everyone would, you know, I'd want to say that everyone should perhaps try it, you know, and give it a, give it a go. Uh, maybe just, you know, for a little while. Um, not not to kind of go, look, look how terrible we've got it. But just because it is interesting. If you, if you love people, if you like working and being around people, then honestly, I think customer service is the place for you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest you do it for too long because it, it will eventually... Uh, it will eventually get to you, but uh, no, it is it is definitely a, a great industry to to work in, and I'll always believe that, no matter what I do for the rest of my days. I think it's uh, it's phenomenal stuff. But um, but that that's that. That's me talking about customer service.